This conference will now be recorded. Uh, good morning or afternoon, as the case may be, wherever you are. This is Gonzalo Garcia at Agency One, and uh, we're very grateful for the fact that you guys are on the phone today. Um, we have been speaking with uh, our friends at Securian at Minnesota Life, um, and we thought it would be a very appropriate time to present um, one of the unique opportunities that they offer in a very, very unique uh, IUL design. So, um, you know, given the volatility of the markets today, um, an IUL could certainly be an option for that. Given the low interest rate environment with money markets and CDs at um, almost all time lows, if not at all time lows, uh, we have a pre and deposit account that, that fits right into that space. And, you know, in the world that we live in right now with socially, uh, socially distant underwriting is what I'm going to call it. Um, Securin has a very unique uh, accelerated underwriting program that um, that can help us there. So I think the combination of these three gives us something really to, to have a conversation with uh, current clients about that are worried about their retirement, about the equity markets, about the low interest rates. Um, we're pleased to have Ed Stark, um, our very own Ed Stark at Agency One, who heads up our um, illustration and sales support team as well as Jim Williams and David McCoy from Securian. So with that said, uh, gentlemen, the uh, call is yours. Thank you. Mr. Stark? You know, I'm here. Um, how's everyone doing today? Thanks for taking the time and being on the call with us. Um, I don't know if, uh, uh, Dave, are you on there with us? Yep, sure am. Oh yeah, okay. So basically um, you know, what we're gonna kind of do is start out by highlighting the premium deposit account um, or as PDA as everyone seems to refer to it um, and talk about sort of the uniqueness of Securian and then also some of the benefits of the Securian one. And then we'll move on to a case design where we actually ran um, a certain scenario and then talk about some other scenarios that are available and then end with um, some information on how we can use RightFit to, to further make this a better deal. So um, Dave, if you wanna go ahead, I have a few slides prepared. And if you, um, as you're going, I'll change them. Sure, sounds good. So good morning, everyone. And again, thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy schedules to, uh, um, you know, attend the webinar today. Um, again, my name is David McCoy and I work here with uh, Minnesota Life uh, right in the home office. So um, I'm right in the four walls of where all this is happening. But um, one of the benefits that we did want to highlight today is the premium deposit account, which does allow uh, the benefit of depositing um, a premium and receiving a specified interest rate um, over the course of anywhere from two um, all the way up to 10 premium payments. Uh, we do have a very competitive uh, interest rate at, at the moment. So if you are looking to do deposits of anywhere from two to seven uh, premium payments, uh, you're looking at a interest rate of about two and a quarter. Um, and from uh, yeah. 8 to 10, as you can see, we're actually at 275. So uh, we are actually one of the industry leaders uh, right now in terms of the interest that we're crediting. Uh, we did do a recent uh, reduction to our interest rate, but even after that reduction, we still maintain our top uh, position from an interest rate perspective. But again, one of the, the strongest benefits of this is not only taking advantage of the interest, but also allowing uh, your clients to make an initial deposit and to avoid that mech um, and spread by spreading out the premium payments over those uh, specified durations. So, yeah, and Dave, one thing that's interesting with your with your PDA account is so once you put that lump sum into that account, if say in years two, three, or whatever, if you actually want that money back, you can take it back from the PDA, correct? Yep, absolutely. Yep, you would have the ability to uh, take the money back. The only thing would be is you would forfeit the interest that that uh, you had accrued to that time, but there wouldn't be a situation where you're locked in and you're stuck. Um, so if you did deposit and you decided three or four years down the road, maybe this isn't the best route, by all means, you do have the ability to go ahead and cancel and walk away. Yeah, and that, that's, a, that's a good feature for that, especially, you know, just to kind of take some of the, the uncertainty out of what happens down the road. So, um, yeah, so this is an interesting um, PDA option. And so what we did was we actually kind of put another slide together just talking a little bit about it. Um, to uh, the, Again, the main goal of it is to avoid a mech. And a lot of people, you know, they, they, they look at a single pay, at least from where I design cases, and they say, I want to do a single pay. I want to put it all in day one. But, 
you know, a lot of times in doing that with the face amount being so high, you can't design, you know, scenarios that allow you to have income. And so the income scenario is, is where this works really well, because if you spread the payments out, the face amount can stay low, keeping your charges and your cost of insurance down and then give you the ability to generate cash value and to actually take something out down the road. So that's what we're going to kind of show you on this next slide here. This is a, um, sorry, jumping around with the mouse here. This is a sample case. And, and what, what we did was we designed a um, male 55 on this one, and they have a hundred thousand dollars single pay. And so what happens is the first premium payment is made, you know, to the policy. And then the uh, remainder, which is listed at the top left, it's 87,645 goes into the premium deposit account and then gets credited with that 2.75% interest rate. And this kind of breaks down how it's going to be applied to the policy, how the funds are taken out, how the interest is then credited, and it shows you the balance of the PDA along the way. Um, what's interesting in this illustration, when it, this shows up in the illustration, it tells you exactly how much extra interest will be applied to the premium. And that helps enhance the contract and make it look better. So, you know, in this scenario here, you're actually getting an, an additional $11,189 that goes into the policy that we can use to fund that, and that further enhances the cash value. Um, the next page here, this one shows how those premiums are applied to the actual contract. So in this scenario, you got a nine pay, it's $12,354 per year. And hold on, I'm gonna mark this up a little bit. On this left column, Sorry about that. On the left column on premium outlay, you see those nine payments. And then what this does is this actually has a minimum non-MEC death benefit. It increases over time. This is on the right side. And then what you can see in after the ninth payment in this securing contract, we're able to drop the face down to a corridor level. And that's what really enhances this contract. And this, this actually is one of the few that you can do this earlier. In some cases, it depends on the age and it, you really have to model it to see how it's going to look. But you can really squeeze that face amount down to help maximize the cash. If you look on that year 10, you have about 125 of projected value and a death benefit of 153. So you're really keeping this a lean contract and helping that cash grow over time. Uh, the third, sorry, the fifth column here, also highlighted in yellow, shows your projected income stream. Now, this is an index product and we ran it at five and a half percent. And we kept it conservative as far as doing withdrawals to basis. And then we use standard loans, so we didn't get too aggressive. They do have an alternate loan, variable loan scenario that you can use if you really want to enhance that income projection. But again, we kept it kind of simple. And this actually would be a 15-year income stream. So the income is 13675 for 15 years at this assumption. Hey, hey, Ed, so, this is Gonzalo. Yeah. Ed, this is Gonzalo. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'd like to spend a few minutes on this particular slide here, um, the Securian slide that you're showing, um, because I think it's important to, to let Dave talk a little bit about um, Securian's uniqueness and how they treat face amount reductions in the first 15 years, because I've seen this illustration one run on a 60 plus year old with three or four premium payments. And um, you know that the, there's some very very unique things that um, Securin does here. So so maybe this might be an appropriate time to cover that. Sure, I'll take over and and uh, cover that a little bit. So uh, the way that this is done is through the seven pay test. So um, the reason that we're actually able to do a reduction that early into the contract is the way that the reg is actually written is within the first seven years, if you do a face reduction, that you have to test back to either A, the very beginning of the contract, or B, to the last material change. Um, in the case of drop or changing your face amount from an increasing to a level death benefit option, that is considered a material change. So as long as you make that death benefit option change prior to dropping the face, then that actually counts as what the last material change was. And therefore you would just test back to the death benefit option change versus having to go all the way back to the very beginning of the contract. Uh, carriers are a little bit more conservative than we are on that. 
Um, we've had many, many, many uh, reviews with our legal department, and they're very comfortable with our interpretation on this. In fact, one of the attorneys that we actually met with when we were discussing the ability to do this was the attorney who actually wrote uh, some of the MEC guidelines, which further uh, supports our uh, you know, confidence in, in the way that this is written. Um, now, one of the other things that's worth noting as well is other carriers do uh, actually impact their contract slightly different than when, what we do when you do a face reduction. What we do is if you reduce the face, we don't actually require any owing of the surrender charge or anything. In fact, what happens is, is the client would just continue to pay the exact same policy issue charges. What most carriers will do is they'll actually require a portion of that surrender penalty to be owed along with the face reduction, which actually hurts them in terms of their ability to do this. It actually makes it so the contract can't even really handle the face reduction uh, that early in the contract. So it's a little bit of a mix of you know our interpretation of how the reg is written as well as the way that our products are designed in that a face reduction would just require the client to continue to pay the exact same policy issue charge and not have to owe a portion of the surrender penalty at that time. So Dave, so Dave this is Gonzalo again, and, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Stark, um, but I no think that, that, that that's really a super unique interpretation of the MEC guideline test rules. And it is, um, I believe Securian is, um, it is unique in, in interpreting it that way and that it lends itself to just a really, really efficient contract. So if I heard what you said, and I want to repeat that, is you have an increasing death benefit in the early years of the policy. You level the death benefit in the year that you choose to do it. Let's say it's year five or year seven or year three even or four. Um, and that becomes the last material change in the contract. So that when you do your face reduction, you have the benefit of collapsing, if you will, the death benefit to the corridor, which means the optimal design relative to a policy, so are the lowest charges, and you don't have a surrender charge or a, you, know, you don't have as massive amount of a surrender penalty with that face reduction as other carriers would in how you're, you're, you're doing your policy design. Did, did I restate that fairly? Yep, that is 100% accurate. So, I mean, that just lends itself to a massively efficient um, policy design. And, and, and I will tell the folks on the call, I've seen this done on 60-year-olds, 60 62-year-olds with three premiums, whether you use a PDA or not, um, where the income stream can start in year five or six, and it's massively efficient. So just something to think about as you guys are, are, are looking at um, accumulation uh, options with IUL products. I'm, I'm done, Ed. Thank you for that. I just wanted to <laughs> no, so high, well, highlight yeah, that yeah. point. Thank you. Yeah, it does have a lot of good features. So this next slide, again, we're going to take our time on this one. It's a little, um, has a lot of information, actually. So this is something that we put together through Innsmark, and we can do this on pretty much any case that you have. But what we do is we import the illustration into the Innsmark, which shows on the right side of the page. It says, you know, Eclipse Accumulator IUL. And then we can put to the left side, we can put in whatever funding pattern we want to use. In this case, we're using a money market, but we can also benchmark um, equity funds and, um, you know, tax deferred accounts, things like that. But this one gives us the flexibility to show that 100000 going into a money market, kind of showing the growth, what the tax rates are, and then pulling that same income that we take from the policy out of the account. So if you look from the left to the right, um, over here, column one, this is the money market. And again, we're using a money market yield of 1.6%. We put the 100,000 in day one. Column two, we're gonna match the income that we're pulling for 15 years out of the indexed account. So that's 13,675. And as you can see, we get about eight and a half or eight and three quarters years before we end up lapsing that. So, you know, that's your, if the person says, hey, I just want to keep it in my bank account and see what happens, it kind of gives us an idea of how that's going to perform compared to the other contract. So going over to column six, which is, is this green box over here to the like mid right of the page, you'll see that we put in those nine payments. We solve for the income stream. And again, this is at five and a half percent, but we can change that to 
you know, we can go lower. Uh, we can take it up to an AG 49 rate, but again, we, we, we kept it sort of reasonable, but we did withdrawals to loans. And that shows the same income, but we can pull it out longer. And it shows the benefits of the cash value. It shows the surrender value column. And again, the death benefit, which you don't get in the other money market account. So you do have a, a sizable death benefit through about age 63 before we reduce it. So they are getting death benefit and the benefits of growing that cash and then pulling it out on a tax-free basis. So these sheets can be custom-made also. And again, we can do the IUL product on the right and on the left, we can put whatever investment option you wanna you know, put it against. We can do the same nine payments, we can do an equity account, but it gives us a lot of flexibility. And this sheet is just a nice one pager that you can set in front of your client and kind of show both as a comparison if it comes up. Do you have something you wanna to add to that too, Gonzalo? Or are you okay with that? No, I mean, I, I, I think that's great. I would, I would say yeah. that, you know, for people that this is, you know, what, what we're looking at here are what I would call safe dollars. I mean, there's a lot of people right now that, you know, given the volatility of the markets have gone to some safety uh, for people that have money uh, in, in, in CDs or, or in money markets or other cash equivalents. Uh, this is a great opportunity for them to earn, you know, 2.25, 2.75% on that idle money. Um, whereas a savings account may be less than half of 1%, a money market might be a 150, 160, as you're illustrating here, Ed. Uh, CDs may be under 1%. So again, I mean, and, and, and that the PDA also gives you an exit strategy if you want to get out where, you know, any unused money that was, um, that was not otherwise paid into the IUL policy uh, is available if, you know, in the event that you've got to get out of the program. Um, so, uh, Dave, I don't know, or, or Jim, I don't know if you guys want to add anything to that. Nothing for me. I think you hit, hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, are there any, any questions from the audience on this? I think we've got um, two questions, Ed, on the chat box. Uh, let me check. One, uh, what is the target for the illustration shown? Um, I will have to give you that, Bob. Um, when we first ran it, we changed it a couple times. It was it was probably around uh, around 5K on this particular scenario, and that was you know based off the face amount. So when you do start with a higher face amount, that target increases. But I'll get back to you on the exact target. I can actually send you the full illustration also. So I'll send that over as well. Yeah. And, and the uh, other think, question for go ahead, get, go ahead. Ed. Yeah, I see that one. Yeah, no, so I see another question mentioning uh, PDA. Does it receive a 1099 on the interest? Uh, yes, it does. So you will get a 1099 on that interest. Um, so that is something you'll get. But again, you'll receive that on any, even on that you know, money market example, you'll get it on that as well. So that's, that's you know, on most PDAs, they'll have that. All right. Let me move on. So this is where um, Jim is going to talk about right fit underwriting. This is how we use this program to kind of fit in these types of deals. So you go ahead, Jim. Yeah, hi. I'm glad to be with you all. Thanks for having me. I'm um, Jim Williams. I'm the regional vice president. has been working with Agency One at Securing for some time now. And as you can see and hear, this is a great concept. And Ed and Gonzalo have done a great job of making the presentation both concise and appealing. But these days to be really great, a concept has to be, has to have the potential to be implemented quickly and easily in this uh, socially distanced world that we're in now. So please note that the initial face amount on this policy is $208,000 and change is well within Securian's right fit guidelines for accelerated underwriting. Right fit is available from ages 18 to 50 up to 2 million and from 51 to 60 up to 1 million. And our success rates have been very, very good. Uh, we have about a 65% acceleration rate. And of those people that get accelerated, about 85% are getting preferred or better. So good field underwriting, though, is really the most important part of this process. And uh, we have a great data taker to help you with that and a really great impairment guide and med guide that can help you with that as well. Also, note that last evening's message from Agency One titled, The Problem, The Truth, The Solution Behind Accelerated 
accelerated underwriting programs that you should have received in your inboxes or you can also get it at their website. Uh, Agency One does a great job of keeping you informed and this piece is no exception. In it, the value of good field underwriting is stressed. And um, you know we back that up. That, that's what makes these things, these kind of sales pretty foolproof. If you have the right prospect, not only financially and need on a need base, but from an underwriting perspective, these can go very, very quickly and you can do very well. Uh, that's all I have, unless there are questions on right fit or anything. Jim, else we, we, we've got a about. question from Mitch Ostrov. Jim, uh, is any of this in New York? Is this available in New York? Well, I have to defer to Dave on that. I, I, I don't think it is, is it? The right fit underwriting is um, available in New York. However, New York is going to have a slightly different IUL contract. So um, right. New York, we're going to be having our Eclipse IUL, whereas the other 49 states will be our Eclipse accumulator. So slightly different on a product perspective, but the right fit is available. Okay, so basically you do have product, you do have product where you can reduce the face and do that material change play with the MEC testing, and you do have a pre and deposit account all approved in New York. Yep. Okay, there you go, Mitch. Um, and then uh, the other thing I see in a question here, what is the sweet spot in the age range for the right fit underwriting? Jim, can you address that? I, I think our average age, it's not exactly the question, but I think our average age is around 38. And part of the, I think part of the reason, this is kind of maybe a long-winded answer, but part of the reason why it's so low is because our, our term rates are pretty attractive at lower ages as well. But I, I would say the sweet spot really still comes back to the, to the field underwriting uh, because we generally don't, penalize anybody I and mean, we don't use the risk um, analyzer rating to get anybody worse than a preferred and that's why that 85 percent of the 65 percent number was I think so important if you get through and get accelerated you have a very high chance of getting best class or second best class that's awesome thank you Jim um, there's one more question here um, illustration looks pretty skinny at age 84 what is the duration without the lapse Ed can you go back to the um, to the illustrate the actual securing illustration uh, slide. Yeah, that doesn't and, and, go and, that far. But again, when, when we ran this yeah. scenario, this was run at five and a half percent to basically run uh, to age 105. Yeah. So and, and let is, me just address it, that. It, it, let, let me just right. go ahead, Ed. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It is it is run rather skinny. But again, we can change that parameter on the solve, so we could solve for you know more or less cash. But again, it's sort of a, a benchmark you know, at least when we ran the illustration, just to show what would happen if we could keep that rate on going. Yeah, Ed, go to the next, to the Insmark slide. I think that's probably what, um, there it is, stop right there. Um, so as, as you can see, folks, that the illustration here, the death benefit is $12,000 and the cash surrender value is $4,700, call it. That's basically what you're doing there is you're riding the corridor. You can see actually that in the year prior to age 84, the death benefit actually went up. And you know, recall that we didn't, we're not using par loans here. So we could get more aggressive if we use indexed or participating loans. But in effect, what we're doing here is we're riding the corridor. We're just gonna let this thing continue to be at the absolutely most collapsed death benefit that we can have and still satisfy the definition of life insurance under 101. Um, and if, if you run this illustration out, we're happy to share you all the numbers and stuff. Uh, we can, as a follow up to this call, we can send out um, the actual illustration running the, all this, the report sets that we did. Uh, but you'll see that that death benefit begins to creep back up over time. And Ed, I think you ran it out to 105, right? So it doesn't yeah. lapse at five yeah. and a half percent out to H 105. Right. And you can also, you know, move at that time, if you wanted to put that money into the fixed account, you know, move it down that way. So there's, there's different options. And we can model it depending on your comfort level. Okay. Um, yeah. So I mean, that's that's what we have. Um, that, that that's our. Are there quick any additional idea. questions? Yeah. No. Well, that I mean, that that's our quick idea for today, and I, I just want to do a quick recap. Um, you know, you have right fit underwriting for clients under age sixty up to a million dollars. So you know, in our example, we're using a hundred thousand uh, dollar 
a PDA account for about a $12,000 premium. You had about a five or $6,000 target. Um, you've got a, a very unique uh, dropping of the face amount and le or leveling of the death benefit and dropping of the face amount in the early years to really make a, a, a policy that's incredibly efficient. Um, we ran this at five and a half percent, which we think is, you know, fairly conservative in the world of IULs, although time will tell. Um, and, um, you know, we're using withdrawals to basis in, in, in uh, fixed loans uh, in our scenario. Not we're, we're not using participating loans. So, I mean, we can really have fun with this concept. And um, I, I just want to thank, uh, you know, Jim and David on, on the phone from Securian. Uh, Mr. Stark, thank you as well. Um, and, uh, you know, in this environment where people are worried about retirement planning and worried about what to do with money today, um, you know, we have a very competitive PDA and a very competitive IUL product that may give you guys some things to talk to your clients about. Um, so with that, unless we've got any other questions, um, you can either unmute your mics hey. or, um, or, or talk to us. Gonzalo? Ahead, yes, ma'am. Hey, it's Good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before you all drop off, I just want to thank everybody that had dialed in for the past two weeks um, during our lunchtime uh, quick WebEx sessions. We are going to be dropping a schedule later this afternoon for the next two weeks. Again, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So please look for that email. And uh, we hope that you will continue to join us um, during these sessions. Uh, also, if anybody has any topics that they would like us to cover, that you know, sessions that they think would be interesting, we are open to uh, any suggestions, and um, I guess we are taking requests, so to speak. So, uh, again, thank you very much. But I just wanted to mention that. Well, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank right. you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks Thank for your you, time everybody. and. Uh for your participation on the call. Bye-bye.